There you go. There we go. We can't beat the old phone. Yeah, no, that's uh, <laughs> that's fun. That's great. We'll start it off now. <laughs> uh, we, we we might go back to no camera, so. <laughs> <laughs> we can stop. Come on. <laughs> I don't think green screen look like you do, but come on. <laughs> yeah, well, th- this is one of them. For those that are listening, this is one of them where I can, you know, pretty much just wind Rory up and take my camera off, and he'll I'll see you on the other side. So you'll get a sense of that now in the next few minutes. Um, <laughs> How, first of all, how are you keeping? Yeah, not too bad. Making the most now of hopefully the bit of time off. and uh, But yeah, it's been good so far. I've been enjoying college so far. I'm enjoying it. Very good. We're going to get into, actually, Mike, because we didn't get a massive chance to maybe ask Maeve about what's different in the current circumstance. So we might get into a little bit about just the online learning and your experience and just in general, what college has been like uh, with regards to the way it's situated at the moment. Um, but just like I started with uh, Maeve, I might just start with yourself. So, why DCU? Was it always something you wanted to, in terms of place you wanted to go? Or had the course you wanted to do? Was it somewhere else you had in your mind? Tell me about coming to DCU initially. Yeah, so pretty much. So the original decision was I wanted to go into business. I knew I wanted to do some business. It was my favorite subject at school was leaving Sir Business and leaving Sir Accounting. But I wasn't too sure about committing to the accounting yet. But through a lot of research, I, I did find out. If you want to go into business, you're going to need at least something in accounting, really. It's hard to escape, to be honest with you. Now, you're going to eventually have to do it. And I know it's a misery word to a lot of people, but my attitude was, I'm just going to go after. I'm going to try and get good. And I end up, like, when I was in Leaving Cert, this was, I really started to, like, actually enjoy it because accounting is very much, if you get over the hump with it, it really starts to click in place and you find out it actually isn't all that bad. So, uh, yeah, so pretty much when I was looking at courses, DC accounting and finance, was it was pretty much where my points were like I, I wanted to go for a course that I felt like was like for my max potential and when I found this course it gave the exemptions I was looking for I'm sure we'll get into that later because that's such a big part of the course but um it gave the exemptions I was looking for it was three years but the employability of the graduates coming out of this course was huge and that's really what I was looking for and talking to a lot of people who I knew as well who had gone down similar paths if there was anything people who hadn't done accounting had said it was, I wish I'd done it earlier so that where I am now, I'd have a bit, like a bit better of an understanding of it. So I said, I'm going to try, just get ahead of it and do it early. Lots of people, I guess, pick up the information in all sorts, be it online, be it open days, be it maybe knowing someone or even a family member going to DCU. How did you get the information that you needed or anything that you didn't know? How did you get it? So I'm pretty lucky. I'm pretty close to Dublin. I'm, I'm literally in Dunboyne, which is on the border. So I had the open days as being my main source of information. So... Uh, if you do have the opportunity, please do try. I know we obviously had this here, but do try getting to those open days because I remember asking, I was actually between aviation as well because it's where my dad works. So um, it's a brilliant course actually, DC, the aviation management. So it really came down to a kind of a coin flip almost between accounting and finance and aviation management. But going to the open days, I got the information I needed on both. And there's really, guys, as many people as you can talk to from courses. So uh, I know DC, its website is brilliant. There's uh, the uni buddy profiles as well. There's all stuff you like. You'd be able to find out more on uh, student help at DCU, and that's really. I just made, made the most of the information available to me, and that's what you have to do if you want to be, make it feel like you've made the right choice with your course. You have to get all the right information. So definitely get your information as much as you can from trusted sources. Try to avoid as much of your friends saying, "I'm doing this. You should do it too." It's not the ideal way to pick a course. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, maybe just to follow up on that briefly. Well, two points actually. Um, follow up on that briefly. I know my colleague Sinead McCone is listening, and there's so much thing, so much information that's online, be it social media and everything else that is there at the moment. So we're trying our best from a DCU point of view, trying our best to make sure that's all at everybody's fingertips, as I mentioned a moment ago. And the second thing is, as we're gonna we're gonna get into the course now, as we're chatting, if you have a question, it's anonymous, you can throw it in on the QA function. I'll get 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 to it, I'll see it, and I can ask Rory then directly. So Accounting and finance, you're in an elevator. Give us your elevator pitch. What happens inside accounting and finance and uh, maybe some of the modules? A bit about it first. How many floors have we got? Right, so <laughs> uh, uh, pretty much you're starting off, it's a three-year course. So a lot of people will look at the three years and think that might be a disadvantage. It's a huge advantage to the course. You're getting in quick, you get out quick and the stuff you're learning in between. So year one, they start everything from the ground up. A lot of people, and it's a very standard question is, do I have to have already done accounting before? And the answer is no. In fact, the guy in my year who came first actually didn't have an accounting background from leagues or he just came straight into the course. And granted, this guy's a brain box, he's a genius, but it does go to shop. You put in the bit of work and you will get through fine without having done accounting previously. So 
uh, basically, yeah, year one, you start off from scratch. So you're doing a bit of economics. It's a little bit of law, uh, obviously your main accounting modules, uh, but really year one, not too bad. You get a flavor of everything and that gets developed through the course. You're never, there's never too much expected of you, really. If you, put, if you put in the work, you go to your lectures, you take your notes, you'll be fine. So year two, they get into more of the finance side and the finance side is tricky, but it's really, really enjoyable to learn about. Because it is what well, pretty much, you know, like why well, you see all these guys Waffle Wall Street, stuff like that. That is, well, probably a more traumatic size, but it is finance. That's what they're doing. It is what they are doing with the stocks and so lot. And um, I'm making it sound like I really have no idea what I'm talking about, but I always have <laughs> afraid that you know, I don't have the ability to go into half detail. I'll either give this or I'll give everything. <laughs> but uh, uh, so you're getting into more of the finance side and you're advancing accounting on, you're learning about new accounting standards. So I, I'm not, if anyone here is doing leaving cert accounting, what you're doing when you're doing the workings under question one, you're actually learning how to do accounting standards. You just don't actually know it yet. When you come into the course, they'll teach you all about what the kind of background is to what you're doing there. The back, that's pretty much a simplified basis of what you're going to continue. Accounting does help, but absolutely not required. Uh, year three is where you specialize. You get to pick between economics and uh, management, accounting, and there's one other that's escaping me, but... If you want that cap one exemption, you're going to have to do the accounting. So, but that choice as well, doesn't really limit you because right now I am doing economics. I am doing a law module as well. And through the other options that you get, you do get the option to do a management style course as well. I know there is an intro to HR in there as well. So a lot of flexibility throughout the course of people, when they hear accounting and finance, they will think that they're pigeonholed into it. Yes, the accounting and finance is a big side of it, but you will be picking up loads of other skills along the way. And that's a big reason why this course is so employable is because of these skills you're picking up as well as the accounting. The, the, um, sometimes like, some, some people like to know class sizes. Class size, uh, 120. So you will, that's our kind of base course will be accounting and finance 120. In first year, you will have a lot of courses uh, in with you. So I know why the intro to macroeconomics and that has, oh, maybe you look 400, I think in it. Actually, it could be even be more. They actually have to divide that up and that's in one of the big, big lecture halls. And that's just because so many different courses do intro to uh, economics. So you will have big class sizes like that. But as far as your course goes, it's 120. And a lot of the time, it will only be that 120 you're with. In, in terms of, and this is slightly aside from the course, but it's important as well, coming into the program, or certainly from your experience, so you're coming from not too far away, but but Dunboyne, but not too far away, but coming from um, outside of Dublin, I guess, technically, you're coming into a program that has 120 people in it. Maybe you knew someone that was there how do you settle in? This may be a general question, but how do you settle in? What happens? What goes on the first week or two, etc.? Uh, the best advice, it is kind of corny, but do stay true to yourself because if you are yourself, you're going to meet like-minded people with you. So I know in my course, uh, everyone kind of found their groups fast, it felt like, in the first few days. And that could be kind of like, it could, it could sound nervous that if you don't get like so-called a group, you'll be in trouble and you'll be on your own for the three years. It really, really isn't like that at all. And the more people you talk to in college as well, it, I don't even know how to describe it because I know like, one of my best friends in college now, David. It's literally, I just sat down beside him at the orientation day. We got talking, we got talking about where we're from, what we did in the leaving cert, the whole lot. Then we had a few more orientation events. So I just, you know, sat beside David. And yeah, there was one of my best mates in college. So, you know, we were meant to go on holidays, but that got cancelled. Uh, and also, pretty funny that there was a guy who was in my secondary school who I actually was good friends with. I didn't even know he was in the course until like two weeks in because he just hadn't been in at all because I think he was sick or something. So when he showed up as well, it was nice. And then I was like, yep, this is David. And from there, we've kind of just gone to know a lot of people in the course. So yeah, that's, I'm not sure if that's the good answer or not, but they just pick someone and sit beside them. But that's why I did. <laughs> no, I just was it because some people, uh, I guess, find it anxious and daunting and, and naturally enough, it's a new place and it's a new experience, but it's just interested. So, oh, I was terrified. Yeah, it's 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 it feels so scary, but you have to remember everyone is the exact same because it's easy to point out the two people who already know each other. But if you look around, you see another hundred odd who don't have don't, don't know anyone. They're all sitting there and looking at each other, all awkward. So yeah, everyone's the same boat as you. Not to worry. So you mentioned, and we're sort of jumping up and down and left to right here, but I think the flow. So you mentioned a little bit around the course structure, what goes on, uh, class sizes we were talking about there, kind of settling in, etc. A bit about the exemptions. What else did you or would be useful for those listening that you know now that maybe didn't know when you're coming into the program, or was there anything around the, about the program itself? About the program itself, uh, I actually didn't realize 
just kind of how much you're getting prepared to go to work. It feels like a strange thing to say because you do get it. You do get a degree to go off and then hopefully find a job with that degree. But from day one, you were really being trained into almost like a position in an accountancy because you're being taught the skills and there isn't, I found in a lot of places, there's a disconnect between you learn this, but where do I use it? This whole course is anything you learn, you will use at some point. And that's something that's, it definitely motivates you to learn because it is tough. If you're learning something that you don't think you'll ever use, you're not going to put yourself really into it. So when every step of the way, there's a firm, KPMG are work very closely with the course as well as the other big four, Deloitte, PwC, EY. And they will, lo- they love to point out, we love when students score high in this module. It's a good indicator. Of that's something that they would be doing on a daily basis here. Um, I, obviously, the accounting is a big part, but even simple things like communications and psychology, little things that, you know, it might, you might look at it and say, I signed up for accounting, not communication psychology, but they are huge skill sets to kind of add to your, uh, yourself as an employee. It's almost like your employee CV of like the, how well can you fit into a position? And yeah, that's definitely something I said, I probably wish I knew in first year more because in second year, I've definitely felt this. It. It's that no one first year, everything you learn has a purpose, whether it's you're going to use it again second and third year, or if it's actually something that's going to be part of your job. The IT is actually the, the big one for that, learning your, yourself a bit of IT, getting familiar with it. So yeah, definitely wish I knew more about that. Yeah. I just want to remind people, we have 15 minutes left or so, maybe a little bit more. If you have a question, you want to know something, they are anonymous, uh, throw it in the Q&A box and I can ask Rory. So um, please do do that if you want to know something a little bit more, you hear something you like or you're just not quite sure of. So we have in DCU, three academic campuses, all have those same paths, St. Patrick's from Condra and a Glasnevin campus. Um, you do a lot of your work on the Glasnevin campus? Uh, yeah, I'm 100% on uh, Glasnevin. As most of the business faculty will, you'll, you'll tend to be based on Glasnevin, which I like. You know, there's a lot around the campus. It's a, it's a nice campus. I enjoy it, yeah. For those that are unfamiliar, or maybe they are familiar, just don't really know, what else, though, aside from academics, academics is obviously important, where you're doing your um, your study and learning and developing and so on academically. But what, what else is on the Glasnevin campus, facility-wise? What can you do? What do you do? Oh, okay, so pretty much on I'm I own DCU because it is a bit of a commute for me that I if I go out I'll probably look this is why I got involved in clubs and societies I want to spend the day out there so I kind of spend a lot of time in the restaurants <laughs> they do a, a carvery it's roast beef Thursday it's five euro roast beef carvery dinner I hope I I hope they bring that back because that was just the highlight of every Thursday I mean you have to get there early too it went fast everyone knew about it uh, where but mainly about the campus facilities. The hidden cafes are so cool. There's cafes everywhere in DCU. And I am literally in the, like in third year still finding out about more cafes that never knew about. So um, I spend a lot of my time on campus. I'll be going between the U is brilliant. It's just so like, it's just such a great communal space. Sit around with your friends, catch up between lectures. And it does actually help for lectures if you're talking with your friends about kind of projects and stuff like that. Because I find if I have an essay that I haven't even started, and I'm talking to my friends about it. I'll actually almost explain what I should be doing for it. So then when I actually sit down to go do it, I've already actually been talking about it. But the U is where I spend a lot of my time, definitely. So between there, getting a bite to eat in the restaurants, getting a coffee in one of the many, many, many cafes for at DCU, or up in the library. The library is fantastic. I, I've seen other colleges' libraries, and I have to say, I would never trade in that DC library for anything. It is, like, unbelievable. You've everything there. You can rent out laptops. I know a guy, he has not brought a laptop. This is not advisable. Do if you have a laptop, bring it with you. But he just doesn't bring a laptop in with him. He's constantly renting at the library once. It works out brilliant for him. And there's a mentoring suite in the back where we can always work on our group projects together. Pretty much anything you can think of that you would need, DCU provides it there. And obviously, I'm sure we'll get into the clubs and socks about the sport campuses, the one and St. Clair's down the road from Glasnevin. And yeah, really, between a whole day in DCU, I will be all over the campus. And I love it. I, I definitely will get into clubs inside. I just want to park that for a moment. I just want to maybe touch on, and just again, a reminder um, that you can ask the question if you want. It's anonymous. Um, it's on the screen, the Q&A function. I want to ask you maybe about, so it's week, is it week two of 10 or is it week three of DCU? Ooh, we are week three, week three, yes. Well, if you don't know, we're, we're, we're week three, okay. Um, so obviously in a couple of weeks, right now as we're currently sitting um, with regards to COVID and everything else, it's a little bit different with online learning. Your experience the last couple of weeks, and even at the end of last semester, I think you might have had a little bit of it as well with regards initially when COVID hit and lockdown and so on. So your experience in general, how have you got on? How has DCU accommodated uh, students? What was your experience being like? 
Yeah, I mean, it's I can't imagine what it's like for lectures, especially I have two lecturers who were pretty close to time, but they're in their sixties. Like, and uh, to, for the depth, like the how quickly they adapted to it was phenomenal because they just had everything up on the slides, all the notes. They were recording lectures straight away. So, especially with how quick everything happened last semester, because I feel like it's almost like it's so long ago now. But it literally happened overnight that everything just got locked down. All of a sudden, everything's getting moved to online. And with how quickly they responded, oh, yeah, I was going into exams that, you know, they, the summer exams were definitely the big ones for accounting and finance, as I was assuming for most courses, because you're getting all your year long modules getting examined there. So it was really nerve wracking, but like the exams were fair. One, mod, uh, one um, lecture, John Nolan, he made the exam like perfect. It tested your ability. It wasn't too long, wasn't too short, and it was a really good, considering this was, like, he had a total other plan for an exam that we we're obviously going to be sitting in person. How quickly he got up a new kind of coursework and how he was going to grade it, it was really just, we, everyone in the course made note of that was really impressive how quickly he turned it around. So moving on, though, to the start of this semester, it really has been, it almost, it is kind of weird because it does feel like I'm not actually, you know, it doesn't feel like anything's changed because despite me being on campus so often, the principle stays the same. Your lecturers are going to be doing their lectures. They're going to have notes on up after you do your tutorial questions and you kind of move through your day. It is a little bit tougher because I would love to be on the campus. Getting to see my friends, getting those kind of mini breaks in between the lectures is something that you, that is probably the best part of DCU. It's just the little things like that, but I am liking it. I'm getting like the education, which is obviously number one. So, so far, so far, so good anyway for me. Definitely. Yeah. And just maybe to highlight, and I know schools all over the country have different systems. So on the DCU has what we call the DCU loop system, which is effectively a one-stop shop where your lecture notes will be, where there's videos, whether there's where there's further reading, there's quizzes for the first years that that just came in there a couple of weeks ago. It was there's been like an online um, a communal place where they can meet and get to know people from their area and various different things. So there is, I guess, a central place. It's not just you know each faculty of each course doing their own thing there's very much a coordinated from the very top down approach and i just thought i'd touch on that because i guess people might be interested just in, in that aspect hopefully we'll be you know out of that as soon as possible and safe to do so but i think it's worth mentioning uh, so we have about 10 minutes left and again just a reminder if you have a question you heard something you want to know more about or you just want to ask something that hasn't come up yet please do that and um, there is a q a function and it's anonymous i want to because outside the classroom like at everyone that I'm speaking to every week here outside the classroom is so big with regards what people do. And we've touched on, and you'll probably touch on this anyway, but we've touched on the personal development. You can join things that you're interested in. You can try something totally new just to see what it's like and, and develop and network and so on. So just in terms of your journey, what happens outside the classroom? What do you get up to? What do you get from it? Uh, has it been beneficial meeting people and so on? Give us a sense of that. Yeah, so pretty much outside the classroom, clubs and societies is a big part of it. Uh, just on the regular day to day, uh, the events kind of like the DCU has the um, I think they call devotion now. The party in Newbar every Tuesday. That's a great way to get out and meet new people as well. I know a lot of the courses for their night out will organize. Sorry, am I going uh, off there, Johnny? Just because nope. something popped up on my phone. Oh, cool, great. Sorry, <laughs> that before I was in a meeting and so an email popped up and I just don't hear me for an hour. <laughs> but um, yeah. Pretty much, uh, those are a brilliant way. They're a great way that they will have um, someone, a student who's kind of like, I think it's a course lead or something, course chair, maybe. Oh, no, course chair is Orla. I can't remember what the, it's pretty much a student who takes charge of the course. Uh, representative, sorry, that's the word of club. That's, that's <laughs> it's totally dumbed out there, honestly. <laughs> uh, and they will usually organize a class night out. And it's great when you have kind of your, maybe two or three friends who you've been hanging out to, with for orientation to then go on a few nights out with them there. It's on the campus usually finishes up around like, you know, half 11, 12. So it isn't even too late. And you get to have a few drinks, get to meet other people in the course, other people in DCU. And uh, for now, we've mainly just been doing kind of video calls. And um, yeah, it's been good. There is a good sense of community in DCU. It's like you said, they're following on. Like, it's actually pretty impressive how they've done it because despite being all online, they've still managed to have people from different courses, different societies, all talking to each other. Especially, I like the idea that they did it by area as well. So Hopefully everyone does get to meet each other in person, but um, DCU does do a lot for its community and making sure the students do feel happy and do enjoy themselves. That is a big thing to DCU and it's evident in the way they uh, carry themselves and put their uh, interest into students, definitely. 
So again, just to remind people that maybe not familiar, we have a DCU Students Union and there is um, full-time employees of DCU that essentially look after the students with regards to things that are going on inside the classroom, challenges, finance. We have a totally different unit called the Student Support and Development Unit, which look after student cohort with regards to changing courses and a few a few other elements that they would do, well-being and so on. So just to bear that in mind for those listening, that if there is something happening outside the classroom, there is so many touch points. It's not just here, here's the 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 course and we'll see you, you know, in a couple of months or whatever it might be. There's so much support and 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 elements that that are there. Just a reminder, there's a couple of minutes left. I'd say we have maybe six or seven minutes left. If you have a question. Uh, please do pop it in about the course or not and um, I'll, I'll happily ask Roy. looking back um, and I'm kind of asking this in a different way to everybody but but I, but I think it's um, sometimes you uncover a bit of magic looking back what advice would you give yourself now reflecting on where you're sitting now versus maybe where you were um, a couple of years ago what advice if any for yourself Total lectures like I mean it sounds <laughs> so stupid but like when you go from being everyone telling you to do your work to now no one tells you to go anywhere, you can do what you want. The first set of exams I did in DCU were the toughest thing I've done in my life. I was pretty much I was thinking let's go out to go. And yeah, it was oh, you you gotta put in the work, you've got to go to your lectures. And you will have time outside of that. It's not like you just do one thing. Go to your lectures, enjoy your lectures because come December, come January, come the end of the year, it'll make your life 10 times easier. So do remind yourself that even though no one's asking you to do the work, you still kind of got to do it because it is, there is a massive, I know I'm not the only one because everyone who I talked to felt it in January that, oh, well, we shouldn't be doing this the whole time just because no one was telling us to do it, we probably should have done it. On a more lighter note, I definitely would tell myself get more involved earlier because I waited until maybe my second semester of year one to actually start to even properly look at the societies. Like I... I was one of these guys I came into DCU, did like a lecture or two and headed home. And I was, I was really like, I don't see why people rave about this college thing. It isn't actually even that great. As soon as I started getting involved and started getting more engaged with DCU, I said, this is like some of the best years of my life. I'm like, since getting involved, I've loved every minute of it. I'm, me- I'm raging now. I'm missing campus for my final year for the first semester anyway. And it is something that I definitely would tell myself is you have such a limited time in college make the absolute most of it yeah it's it's powerful advice and it's, it's so simple in many ways but often uh, and again i'm speaking to not only talking to people like yourselves but having gone through dcu myself a number of years ago you, you do kind of look back with uh i guess that making the most of it sometimes you did and sometimes you didn't but 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 i guess it's so apt 